This weekend, I went to an event hosted by Students for Free Speech and Generation Screwed at the University of Toronto to discuss issues around free speech and fiscal policy. The campus event had notable speakers, like psychology professor Jordan Peterson, MLA politician Derek Filderbrandt, and our very own Ezra Levant. Obviously, none of these speakers were happy with Canada's handling of these issues. On fiscal policy, I talked to the Manning Centre director, Craig Collins, author of The Government Wears Prada, who had this to say about our economic future. Well, I, I'm certainly disappointed with what the, the Trudeau government is, is doing right now, very concerned, uh, not just in the short term because of the large deficits that they're running, but in terms of the overall sustainability of federal government finances as a nation gets older and older and older. We're going to have a huge a fiscal challenge in this country because of the, the issues uh, posed by an older uh, aging population. So. Uh, I think the government's going in the exact opposite direction of where we should be going. If anything, they should be running surpluses and paying down debt so that we have fiscal flexibility for when the aging population fully hits our, our country and those costs are, reali uh, uh, costs are realized in healthcare and other areas. So as you can see, this event was entirely intellectually driven. Jordan Peterson spoke about postmodernism. Derek Fildebrandt spoke about the w uh, Wild Rose Party and the future of Canadian conservatism. We had professors, policymakers, and even politicians speaking to students and guests about issues affecting all Canadians. And these are serious issues. Here's what one student, 15 years old, had to say about the future of free speech in Canada. Really what I think is that universities should start, you know, stepping in front of the people who want to restrict our freedom of speech. Like, even look at this event. We have people protesting an event about freedom of speech, and I think that's just ridiculous. The right for people to speak freely amongst each other. As the high schooler mentioned, there were people protesting and rioting outside the event. These people, as English professor Janice Fiamingo pointed out, were radical leftists who had been taught by their university professors to fight, sometimes violently fight, against those who disagree with them. As Fiamengo explained, they, along with academia, stifle civil discussion. Um, radical leftist ideas have uh, a certain kind of strangle, stranglehold where people are afraid to speak against them because of the kind of public shaming and the other forms of sanction that can result if you do speak against those ideas. And it's really limiting the possibility for civil dialogue on campus. The radical leftists outside call themselves anti-fascist or antifa. Around that time, Ezra came to speak. The anti-fascists fought past security guards, storming into the event. The anti-fascists broke tables, ripped books apart, stripped half naked, pulled the fire alarm, all while yelling, this is what white supremacy looks like. I actually lost my voice, yelling back at them, I am not a white supremacist. They also screamed, this is what fascism looks like, when we were advocating against fascist policy restricting free speech. Take a look at our video of what occurred. I'm not, you think I'm a fascist, but I'm not a fascist. I disagree with fascists. On the right wing, left wing people cannot be fascist. Look in the fucking dictionary. I consider myself a classical liberal. I consider myself a liberal. I don't give a shit how you identify. I'm not a white supremacist. Guys, I'm not a white supremacist. I promise you. I promise you. I don't know about you, but I think there's something mentally perverse with these anti-fascists, especially since they labeled us as fascists and white supremacists. In reality, many of the people who came and organized the event weren't fascists, and you know, many weren't even white. Many of them had diverse opinions too. Take Hazel, for example. She's a Black Lives Matter member, as well as a Trump supporter. Though many would call her a walking contradiction, she had a lot to say about the climate that the left, particularly those same people who rioted outside, are creating on university campuses. In addition, unlike these anti-fascists, we were in perfect agreement that the freedom of speech and expression should always be protected both legally and socially for any individual. Observe. I think it's all, it always comes down to the individual, what they feel, what they like. And I feel like there are actually a lot of people who may identify as Marxist, but, and they don't agree with a lot of the shit that's going on, but they, they're so afraid to speak out. Like right now, it's like, People are so afraid just to say the wrong thing, right? You say the wrong thing, you're socially isolated because it's like you don't agree with us and you're out. You're out of the circle. So what can we take away from this event? Well, for starters, 
There are a lot of young, violent people who are against discussions around free speech and fiscal policy on university campuses. I imagine these same young people are against conservatism, too. They view conservatives as racist, sexist, homophobic, when in reality, political ideologies are far more complex than their sociology classes have taught them. In addition, I have personally learned that these anti-fascists are the real terrorizers. They're the ones causing Western schools havoc at the moment. We've seen this on UC Berkeley, we've seen this in NYU, and now we're seeing this in the University of Toronto as well. Whether it's a discussion about free speech or the economy or conservatism in general, these local university-grown violent activists will come and they will terrorize those who wish to have a civil discussion. In this case, we had a perfectly normal discussion about free speech and fiscal policy, and the anti-fascists still came. The anti-fascists came and they violently disrupted, but we still intellectually fought on. We discuss the issues that affect us all. Luckily, at the end of the day, we got the last laugh because they acted like freaking idiots while we talked about the issues and changed hearts and minds. I'll end this video off with the Winston Churchill quote. The fascists of the future will be the anti-fascists. Though they are not our intellectual equivalent, let us know our intellectual enemy. Let them know. Share the information as to what has happened in the University of Toronto's campus so the world can know who they really are and what they do. I'm Jay Faza from the rebel.media. I'd like to thank the people from University of Toronto's Free Speech Club and the people from Generation Screwed. Thank you for bringing out the information that people need. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to the rebel.media.